What we're going to do next is we're going to come over to the project window, and then we're going to go to Finder, and we're going to select our cloud asset. Now, I made sure that this cloud asset is quite a bit larger than my footage layer. In fact, this is, this is around 4K. This is higher than 4K. So it'll give me a lot of wiggle room when I put it in my After Effects comp. So let's drag it in. We'll take it and we'll put it on the bottom. And now you can see we have this big gray color, basically. So we'll bring the scale down. So it's just larger than our comp. We'll make it 3D as well. Press P, and because we already have the position of that null object saved, and because it's in the back where the sky should be, we'll go edit, paste, and then we'll just drag this up. And we can scale it up if it doesn't quite fit. I'm trying to determine right now where the cloud should be. I don't know if I would like this right there so much so we can scale this up a little bit and bring it up just like that so now as you can see the clouds stick to our footage layer now what we're gonna do is we're gonna match the colors match the colors of the original footage layer so the clouds look better what we're gonna type in the effects and presets is curves and we're gonna drag curves onto the clouds and then we're going to come down to this tri wheel right here, the three colors, and select red. And then we're going to come over to RGB on the curves and select red as well. Now basically what we want to do is we want to match the contrast for each of the three RGB colors. So we'll go down to green next. And the footage layer is a little bit more contrast or less contrasted for green, so we'll bring that up. There's a little bit of trial and error involved, and then we'll go to blue, and you'll see blue needs to come up quite a bit. So we'll bring it up to match. For this kind of shot, try and fade it into the horizon line as much as you can. And then to see how it turned out, press RGB, and just like that, our footage matches more or less. Now, I'm going to drag that down just a little bit. And now it looks like the clouds belong in the scene. Now you probably notice that the clouds are a little bit grainy, so you can come over to Effects and Presets and type in Fast Blur if you want the quick and dirty option, which is just fine in this situation. And bring up the blur until until the grain is gone. It's probably around 10 for this one, because it isn't overly grainy. Now another thing you can do is you can type in Remove Grain, but that will take longer to render. So I suggest fast blur, especially for this option. If you have moving footage that you need to remove grain, remove grain is a good option, but but this was just a this is just a still footage layer or a still image layer. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create another solid. So command Y or control Y on a PC. Now we wanna make this one comp size. Press OK. And then uh, particular two comes with a few presets already so if you type in snow you'll see under trap code uh, HD presets there's a couple of snow ones already now we'll drag that on just like that and then um, because it animates from the top down we'll drag the solid over and bring the in and out points in by pressing alt and bracket or alt begin bracket to cut it off if you wish. We'll come over to the end and hit alt end bracket. Now the reason you can't see the snow is because uh, the emitter options are too low. They are they're too low here. So you can uh, bring those up and from my last comp I know how I know the values already so I'll just type those in. So you can see the snow already in the back here and bring the particles per second up. I know that I have to bring this up quite a bit to make them visible. Now you can also come down to par uh, particle and boost the size as well. You don't want to do that too much. And also for snow I suggest changing it from sneer or um, sphere to cloudette. 
And all that will do is it will create a little bit more of a ragged shape. And then you just bring, bring up the feathering and drop the size. So what you want to do next is you want to come down to rendering and turn on and make sure depth of field is selected for camera settings. Come down to camera, come down to camera options and turn depth of field on. Another option you probably want to play around with is the far vanish. If you bring that in, you see the, the particles in the background start to disappear. And that's so that when you get a certain distance from the camera, there aren't so many particles. Now another thing I did in the original comp was come over to the effects and presets and type in fast blur. And then I went over and I dragged that onto the snow layer and I brought that up to four. And that creates a little bit more of a softness to the overall snowflakes and makes it just a little bit more, looks a little bit more realistic I think. So as you can see, we have snowflakes that are coming in uh, closer Z space and further Z space, as, as long as X and Y. And that is all powered by this camera, which we used in Camera Tracker to solve right in our After Effects comp. It's pretty amazing, really, when not too long ago we had to go into a third-party program like Buju and then copy over the camera data. So what we'll do now is uh, do a little bit of overall color correction. Now you can uh, press New adjustment layer and the things I like to do I like to bring in a tint first of all when you drag the tint in you'll see that everything will turn black and white but bring that down to zero and bring it up until it looks bleak enough to match your scene and I think that's just around 40 percent and then go into curves bring the curves onto the adjustment layer and then play around with the darkness maybe bring a little bit of contrast in with an S curve but I think the main thing you should do is suck out the red and bring in a little bit of blue now, this is already a fairly blue shot to begin with but now it looks downright cold now the last thing and this is completely optional depending on your contrast curve is to bring in brightness and contrast and boost the contrast a little bit depending on what you're going for now I'm noticing that the more and more I do this, the lighter and lighter the sky looks. That's not so, so much a problem. I go into the RGB settings on the cloud layer in curves. And if I bring that down to match the horizon line, you can match. And these little tiny adjustments in curves actually makes a really big difference. So keep that in mind. We've gone over quite a few things. We brought in some stock footage. We reduced some interlacing. We used a camera tracking 3D um, third-party program to solve a camera inside After Effects, replaced the sky, and added 3D snow to a layer. And then we did some color correction. So this has been Zane Olson for Ion Films Tutorials, and thank you for watching.